God gives an alternative. Mungu ana njia mbadala. And he says only by his word. Anasema ni kwa neno lake. Shall you experience what you desire? Utakumbana na kile ambacho unatamani. And uh, so far we have seen a number of things that are very very important. Hadi sasa tumekubaliana na kuelewa mambo mengi ambayo ni ya maana. A number of things that are enlightening us on what could be the source of our problems. Mambo ambayo yanatufungua macho kulingana na chanzo cha shida zetu. Many things are the things we ignore in life. Mengi yapo ni maneno ambayo tunapuuza maishani. Because we say if any man be in Christ he is a new creature. Maana tunasema mtu akiwa ndani ya Kristo ni kiumbe kipya. The old is gone. Ya kale yamepita. A new has come. Na mapya yamekuja. And we forget to understand that scripture in a better way. Na tunasahau kuangalia ile andiko kwa njia nzuri. Man is a triune. Mwanadamu uko katika utatu. He is a spirit. Ni mwanadamu roho. Man is not spiritual. Mwanadamu si wa kiroho. He is a spirit. Yeye ni roho. Are you understanding? Amen. Man has a soul. Mwanadamu pia ana nafsi and he lives in a body. Na anaishi ndani ya mwili. When Adam sinned, Adamu alipotenda dhambi, against God, kinyume na Mungu, his spirit died roho yake ikafa his soul was intact nafsi yake kasalia and his body was intact mwili pia ulikuwepo god has said the day you shall eat of the fruit you shall die mungu alikuwa amemwambia siku ile utakula lile tunda utakufa but god found them alive in the evening lakini mungu akawapata wakiwa hai jioni what died is the image of god in man kila kilikufa ni sura ama mfano wa mungu kwa mwanadamu because god said let us create man in our own image na mungu akasema tumfanye mwanadamu kwa mfano na sura yetu after our own likeness baa na sura yetu Everything on earth was spoken into. Kila kitu kwa ulimwengu kikanenwa and it came. Na kikawa. But man was not spoken into. L- lakini mwanadamu hakunenwa ili awe. He was created. Aliumbwa. He was created. Aliumbwa. So God created man. Mungu akamuumba mwanadamu. To create means getting something out of nothing. Kuumba inamaanisha kutoa kitu mahali hapa kuepo. So he says let us create man. Akasema na tumuumbe mwanadamu. You look at Genesis stood from 26 there mwanzo mbili kuanzia 26 in our own image after our own likeness tufanye mwanadamu kwa mfano na sura ya 26 okay and uh, that is where now god created man hapo ndipo mungu akamuumba mwanadamu but in chapter 3 lakini sura ya 3 god says let us form akasema sana tumtumuumbe there is creation part and there is forming kuna kuumba na kufanya so when he says let us create man alipokuwa anasema tumuumbe mwanadamu in our own image kwa sura na mfano wetu the image of god is a spirit being ile sura na mfano wa mungu ni mtu roho and the way to understand god is only jesus who can tell us who is god na jinsi ya kumwelewa mungu ni yesu kristo pekee yake anaweza tuelekeza mungu ni nani jesus told the samaritan woman yesu kamwambia mwanamke msamaria god is a spirit mungu ni roho so we are able to know who is god tunaweza Jua Mungu ni nani? God is a spirit. Mungu ni roho. So when he say let us make man in our image. Anaposema tumfanye mwanadamu kwa sura yetu. He made man as a spirit being. Akamuuma mwanadamu kama mtu roho. A spirit being. Mtu roho. Are you understanding? Amen. That is how we were created. Ndivyo tulivyoumbwa. Are you understanding? Amen. And if you read that scripture uh, in depth unapoingia katika so ndani wa ile ndiko created them anasema akawaumba male and female na mwanamke na mwanamme so later on hatimaye baadaye god formed man sasa mungu akawafanya wanadamu from the dust kutoka kwenye mchanga wa mdomo god was doing kila alikuwa anafanya is this image of god ni sura ambayo ni ya mungu he put it in a body akaiweka kwenye mwili and man became a living soul na mwanadamu akawa nafsi iliyo hai are you understanding amen man became a living soul and after that Badae, god now planted man in the garden as a physical being kama mtu wa kuonekana man could not rule the garden as a spirit mwanadamu hangetawala bustani kama mtu roho he had to translate man ilimbidi ageuzwe mwanadamu from spirit to the physical kutoka rohoni amuingiza katika hali ya kuonekana and for man to come from the spirit to the physical na ile mwanadamu atoke rohoni aingie asilia he needs a body on earth anahitaji mwili hapo ulimwenguni there is no way jesus could have come on earth as a spirit hakuna vile yesu angeingia duniani kama roho 
Jesus needed a body to be legal on earth. Alihitaji mwili iwe awe halali hapa duniani. Are you understand? Amen. So anything on earth requires a body to be legal on earth. Kila kitu ambacho ni mwanadamu kinahitaji mwili iwe kiwe halali duniani. You can be on earth without a body. Hawezi kaa duniani bila mwili. Satan is also a spirit. Shetani pia ni roho. He cannot live independently without living in a body. Hawezi kaa bila kukua na mwili. So if he leaves a person, akimwacha mtu, he asks for a permission to go into the soul anaomba ruhusa ingie kwenye nguruwe because he cannot live outside the body maana hawezi kaa bila mwili so it's always good to understand ni muhimu kuelewa when man sinned mwanadamu alipotenda dhambi the god part of a man died sehemu ya mungu katika mwanadamu ikafa so man left was left with soul and the body mwanadamu akabakia na nafsi na mwili and that is where now he realized ndipo sasa akatambua i am naked ya kwamba sasa niko uchi by the five common senses na akili zake tano god did what he could mungu akafanya kile angeweza and forgive man akamsamehe mwanadamu judgment was left lakini hukumu ikasalia god did not cast man mungu akumlaani mwanadamu he only cast the serpent alimlaani nyoka he cast the environment where man was working akalaani mazingara mwanadamu alikuwa anafanyia kazi chase them out of the garden akawafukuza kwa bustani what that tells me god forgave them inamaanisha mungu aliwasamehe but he could not trust them with the garden lakini angewaaminia tena bustani he chased them out of the garden Aka So there are issues where God can forgive you but he cannot trust you. Kuna mambo Mungu anaweza kukusamehe lakini asikuaminie tena. Any time trust is broken. Kila wakati Mungu hawezi kuamini tena. It means now you have to build that trust again. Inamaanisha lazima utengeneze hiyo imani tena. So what happened many years later? Kile kilifanyika hatimaye. God wanted man back. Mungu alimtaka mwanadamu arudi. For God so loved the world. Kama Mungu akapenda ulimwengu. He gave. Akato Ah, he gave akatoa what jesus came to do kila yesu alikuja kufanya is to take man through a transition ni kufanya mwanadamu abadilishwe and this is what god told nicodemus na ndio mungu akamwambia yesu akamwambia nicodemus man is living on earth kama mwanadamu anaishi ulimwenguni with his soul and body anaishi na nafsi na mwili the spirit is dead roho ilikufa unless a man is born again sasa mwanadamu asipookoka he must be born again so the spirit man that died in eden unless he is born again he cannot be reconciled to god and that is why nicodemus had a problem he said i am an old man how do i go back to my mother's womb he was told i'm not talking about that what is born of this flesh kilichozaliwa na mwili huu carries the sickness of the flesh kinabeba magonjwa ya mwili what is born of the spirit Kil- is the spirit kilichozaliwa na roho nacho ni roho are you understand amen what is born of a woman kilichozaliwa na mwanamke has the bloodline of that family kina ukoo wa hiyo familia so what is born of the spirit is the spirit kilichozaliwa na roho nacho ni roho so when you say lord jesus come into my life uliposema bwana yesu ingia kwa Your spirit man was now regenerated and born again. Mtu wa roho akazaliwa tena. But your blood, lakini damu yako, your soul, nafsi yako, your body, mwili wako, need transitioning. Unahitaji kuendelea kubadilishwa. That is why the Bible says, Kwa sababu Biblia inasema, be renewed. Ufanywe upya in the spirit of your mind. Kwa roho ya nia yako. And at the same time, na wakati ule ule, present your your bodies uitoe milieno as living sacrifices kama dhabihu iliyo hai if you read your bible very well ukisoma biblia vizuri people that brought sacrifices on the altar walioleta dhabihu kwa madhabahu they tied them with a rope on the horns of the altar walizifunga na kamba kwenye pembe za madhabahu so that the sacrifice does not run away ili dhabihu yao isikimbie so there are so many 
living bodies Kuna ya watu that are presented on the altar but because the fire is hot they run away Kwa sababu moto ni mwingi wanatoroka so they were tied on the altar Ilibidi tabii uifungwe wakati ule I understand it Amen. so it's very very important to understand Ni muhimu kuelewa Your spirit man got saved Mtu wa roho ndiye alizaliwa mara ya pili though you are born again Nafsi yako hata kama umeokoka You can sing the songs of Franco now Bado unaimba nyimbo za dunia very comfortably bila kujali because your mind was not saved maana mawazo yako haikuokoka am i talking to somebody amen your body was not saved mwili wako haukuokoka that is why there is what we call the last of the flesh ndio bado kuna ile tamaa ya mwili the last of the flesh tamaa ya mwili hey There is what we call the pride of life. Kuna kiburi cha maisha. These are the powers that are residing in the soul and the body. Ni nguvu ambazo zinakaa kwa nafsi na mwili. So when we are talking about deliverance, tunapozungumzia sasa ukombozi, it is not your spirit. Sio tu mtu wa roho. It is your soul and your physical body. Ni nafsi na mwili wako. Where the blood of your father is. Mahali damu ya baba yako inakaa. I understand it. Amen. Because what follows your life? Kinachokufuata maisha is connected with your family line kimeunganishwa na ukoo wenu i understand it Amen. so the battle here vita hiyo hapa is not your spirit man sio mtu wa roho you are born again umezaliwa mara ya pili this blood that carries polygamy lakini hii damu ambayo inakuoa wakati from your mother's house kutoka kwa nyumba ya mama from your father's house kwa nyumba ya baba that is where the dispute is hapo ndipo pana mabishano that is where the war is hapo ndipo vita ile I understand it. Amen. Very very important. Let's look at one scripture. Tuangalie andiko moja. Uh, just to open up our eyes. Ni kufungua tu macho yetu. In 2 uh, Timothy 4:18. Timotheo wa 2:18. 2 Timothy 4:18. Timotheo wa 2:18. It says and the Lord shall deliver me. Inasema na Bwana atanikomboa. The Lord shall deliver me. Bwana atanikomboa from every evil work. Na kila kazi mbaya. So there is what is called evil works. Kuna kile kinaitwa kazi mbaya. Evil works. Kazi mbaya. Anything that prevents you from succeeding in Nairobi kila kinachokuzuia usifanikiwe Nairobi is called evil works hilo ndio linaloitwa kazi mbaya what keeps you in hospital in and out kinachokufanya uingie hospitali na kutoka is what is called evil works ndio hicho nazita kazi mbaya i understand Amen. somebody say every evil work kila kazi mbaya in my life you shall release me today utaniachilia leo somebody say evil works evil works in my life in my life you shall release me you shall release me that is very very important ni muhimu hiyo so timothy says timothy anasema the lord shall deliver me bwana atanikomboa from every evil work na kila neno mbaya we live in a world full of evil works tunaishi kwa dunia ambayo imejaa mambo mawili people are suffering watu wanateseka because of the punishment of evil works na adhabu ya kila neno mbaya when i talk about evil works napozungumzia hiyo neno mbaya high blood pressure high blood pressure is a manifestation of evil works ni matokeo ya hiyo kazi mbaya sicknesses that doctors say we can't understand magonjwa ambayo madaktari hawayaelewi it is a sign of evil works ni ishara tu ya hiyo neno mbaya somebody say evil works evil works any time your life stagnates kila wakati maisha yako yanakwama it is a symptom to tell you there is an evil work inaashiria kuna neno mbaya that is punishing you gradually without your knowledge ambalo linakuadhibu pole pole bila kujua the lord shall deliver me from evil works bwana ataniokoa na kila neno mbaya and that is very 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 crucial ni muhimu hiyo when you understand that we live in a world full of evil works ushielewa limwangu mejaa neno mbaya there are people who don't want you to succeed kuna watu hawakutakii ufanikiwe there are people who never allow you to marry kuna wengine watakubali uolewe they propagate what i'm calling evil works wanapanga hiyo neno mbaya and you'll be deceiving yourself na utakuwa ukijidanganya when you say jesus finished on the cross ukisema yesu alimalizwa msalabani team of the came after jesus they are kuja baada ya Yesu and he said there is one is called evil works na bado anasema kuna kila neno mbaya deliver me utuokoe from the evil works na kila neno mbaya and in the prayer of the lord na katika ombi la bwana he told them when you pray akamwambia mnapoomba thy kingdom come ufalme wako uje thy will be done mapenzi yako tie and in closing he says said 
deliver us from the evil one. Deliver us from the evil one. Deliver us. Set us free from the activities of Satan. From the activities of witches and sorcerers. Deliver us. So we must always understand the battle in this world is not against your born again spirit. It is against the power following your father's lineage. And that is what we have looked at many times here. If you study your word very well, our God is a God of generations. Satan is a Satan of generations. Satan does not have expiry date for now. Until the day God will judge him. But for now, we can make our enemies suffer by paralyzing their activities, dethroning their activities over our lives. I understand. Anytime we say every evil power oppressing my life, die. Kufa. Die means separating this power from your life. Death means separation. Are you understanding? Amen. You are separating. That is very, very important. So you must reach a point you understand. I am a believer. But where did I get this disease? Is it in the family? Is it in the family? God, when it comes comes to judging humanity on the basis of sin the only one sin I see in the Bible where God judges generationally is a sin of idol worship where God says I am a jealousy God I visit the iniquity of the fathers upon the achievement children to the third and the fourth generation. Are you understanding? Amen. That is one of the sins that God pursues generations because it is called the iniquity of idol worship. So if you came from a background where people worshipped idols. They bowed before crosses of Jesus. They bowed before a man hanging on the cross. They bowed before a woman holding a baby. That is this Jesus. You were an idol worshiper. I understand it. Amen. If your ancestors went to the mountains, they sacrificed in the mountains and you were born in that family generationally you are pursued by the curse of idol worship and this is number one curse that is entrenched in Africa because every community every community they served other gods before they were born again. Our ancestors, they sacrificed. And when I was a young boy, I've said before here, 9, 10, 11 years, my father would take alcohol using a horn and pour right at the doorpost. He would pour. And I didn't know what he was doing. He would pour at the entrance of the door. Thy, thy, thy young guy, thy. I didn't know these things. He would partake of that alcohol and spit on his chest. This means there was a deity he was worshipping. And right where my mother used to hide this liquor, one day when she got it out of this hole, we found a snake inside. 
you understand? Uh-huh. Anytime you are worshiping idols, you are attracting the powers into the system. I can't explain how that snake came into our house. I understand? Uh-huh. Because when you start practicing uh, idol worship, number one, you attract the powers of witchcraft. And not long ago, uh, or not sana. long time, uh, my mrefu. parents invited a witch in our house. Wangu kisha mchawi kwetu. Hey, because things were not working. Mana mambo haya our family were scattering. And I'm just a young boy. But I don't know these things. This which came. He was dressed smartly. But when he came to the house, he removed all his panafenerias. Put on the witchcraft garments and started speaking in our house. And he said the problem here. It is your neighbor. Hey, Jesus Christ. It is your neighbor. I have seen the neighbor bewitching you. Hey, he did all his ceremonies. We paid, my father paid him a hundred bob. That time a hundred bob was a lot of money. He said, now I've settled everything. I've settled everything. He undressed and put on his suits. Carried his bag and my father escorted him as if, as if he was a guest. Hey, people would think oh, that was a guest. After two weeks, the same witch, we saw him coming to the neighbor who was bewitching us. Hey! Are you understanding? Uh-huh. So witches don't care they only need money. I understand it. Uh-huh. That is the time now. Our family scattered completely. My sister whom I follow got pregnant at standard 6. Hey, at standard 6. My Parents fought on a daily basis. When my sister came back and the pregnancy was still growing, my father would take a knife and say, this one I'll make it burst like a balloon. I will burst this pregnancy. My sister ran away. By the time she is coming, she has a baby and another pregnancy. Things began to go wild. Things became wild. My father chased us and we went to live with my aunt. I was doing my standard 7 exam. So I did it in my auntie's house. We were chased. Life became when witchcraft is involved in a family don't expect success don't expect any success are you understanding Amen. things became haywire and by the time my sister came again back she had I think four babies now four children and she had also twins. She sold them in Marigat. She had given birth to twins. <laughs> I understand it. By the time now we are coming to look for my sister. One of the doctors in our church. Said pastor. Your sister is here in general hospital. But she is in her final stages of HIV. We don't need to keep her here. You will pay a lot of money for nothing. It's okay, you come and pick her. I went and drove her. But I didn't bring her to my house. I took her to my mother, to her mother. I understand it. Complete, you see bones. She Unona. was bones. Alikuwa toni mifupe mesalia. Left her with my mother. Kamuacha na mama. In one of the kitchen we had built. Mujapa nyumba jikoni tu mejenga pa. Within two days she was dead. Sikumbili akafa. His son. Mwana. When he reached eighteen. Alipofika umbro mpya kumi na minane. Hanged himself. Akajinyonga. Seeing problems. Witchcraft can pursue you. 
to the end. Uchawi unaweza kuandaa mahali mwisho. Can pursue you. Unakufuata. Just because they started from my father. Maana ulianzia kwa baba. Came to my sister. Ingia kwa dada. It has killed the son now. Mwa mwanawe sasa. And a lot of things that I can't explain. Na mambo mengi ambayo siwezi elezea. And when I started understanding the powers of witchcraft. Nilipoanza kuelewa sasa nguvu ya uchawi. God empowered me to expose it using his word. Mungu akanitia nguvu kufichua kupitia neno lake. And if you can conquer witchcraft. Na ukishinda uchawi. Things that fight you will start releasing you gradually. Mambo mengi yalikuwa yanakupiga yataanza kuachilia polepole. Because witchcraft sorcery divination. Maana uchawi uganga na utambuzi. These are old practices in the Bible. Ni matendo ya kitambo kwenye Biblia. They are hidden in the Bible. Imefichwa kwa Biblia. The first thing Moses had to learn. Jambo la kwanza Musa ilibidi ajifundishe. Now follow me closely. Nifuate kwa makini. Moses lived in Egypt. Musa aliishi Misri. By the time he has killed a man and ran away. Alipomuua mtu akakimbia. Moses knew the systems in Egypt. Musa alijua mambo ya kule Misri. He understood the sorcery in Egypt. Alielewa uchawi wa Misri. So when now God want to send him back. Mungu anapotaka kumtuma arudi. He him, I have to teach you how to handle witchcraft. Alimwambia nitakufundisha kushughulikia uchawi throw down your rod tupa fimbo yako chini became a snake ikawa nyoka because god knew in egypt maana mungu alijua kule misri the sorcerers and magicians use snakes wachawi na waganga wanatumia nyoka so he said i'm going to send you back akamwambia nitakutuma tena i know you have the knowledge of how they operate najua una ufahamu wa vile wanafanya kazi but when you go now you are not going as moses lakini sasa haurudi tu kama musa i have made you a god to pharaoh nimekufanya Mungu kwa farao as a deliverer kama mkombozi i understand amen and you study your word you will see a lot of witchcraft that was practiced in the old testament ukiangalia biblia utaona uchawi uliofanywa kwa kaangalo la kale we not go into depth when to singia but let's look at this man first tuangalie huyo mtu this man called joseph huyo mtu anaitwa yusuf joseph had two sons called ifraim and manasseh yusuf alikuwa na wana wawili ifraim na manasseh and when he realized his father jacob was about to die alipokuangalia akaona baba yake karibu kufa he wanted to take these two children Ephraim and Manasseh to be blessed alitaka Ephraim na Manasseh wapeleke kwa baba yake wabarikiwe in Genesis chapter 48 mwanzo 48 he took his sons to be blessed akapeleka wanayo akabarikiwe Uh, you can read the whole chapter when you go home naza soma sura yote kena nyumbani but we can start from verse number uh, this is interesting verse 17 tuanze mstari wa 17 Joseph brought Ephraim and Manasseh to be blessed. Yusufu kawaleta Ephraim na Manasseh wabarikiwe. So when now he brought them the father wanted to bless them but he placed his hands in the opposite direction. Alipowaleta kwa baba yake baba yake alikuwa wabariki akawabariki mikono ikiwa imepitana. He put his hands in the opposite. Akaweka mikono imepitana. So when Joseph saw the his father had laid his hands upon the head of Ephraim Yusuf alipona kwamba babaye ameweka mkono wake kwa kuume kwa kichwa cha Ephraim yet this one was not the first born akwa kwamba huyu hakuwa mzaliwa wa kwanza he removed it from Ephraim's head akawinua mkono wa babaye au ondoe kwa kichwa cha Ephraim and put it to Manasseh au weke kwa kichwa cha Manasseh look at this verse 18 the bible says nasema, Joseph said to his father Yusuf akamwambia babaye what you're doing is wrong sivyo unavyofanya i know who is the first born namjua mzaliwa wa kwanza you can't bless them in the opposite hawezi wabariki hivyo so he is taking the right hand so that one may bless who is supposed to be the first born anarudisha mkono wa kume kwa mzaliwa wa kwanza but uh, jacob goes back into history lakini baba yake akarudia historia and he understands akakumbuka i as jacob mimi kama yakobo i was not also the first born sikuwa mzaliwa wa kwanza i want to correct the mistake nataka kurekebisha makosa niliyofanya put the first born back to be the first born nimurudishie mzaliwa wa kwanza baraka yake i understand Amen. not so So my father akamwambia so sivyo baba yangu this is the first born maana huyu ndio mzaliwa wa kwanza so put this right hand back to the first born weka mkono wa kume kichwani pake jacob understood how to reverse what was done more than 100 years ago yakobo alijua kugeuza kilichofanya zaidi ya miaka 100 and his father refused baba yake akakataa and said i know it myself akasema najua mwanangu i know it najua 
he also shall become a people taifa. and he shall also be great pia but truly his younger brother shall be greater Lakin ndugu yake mdogo than he and his seed shall become a multitude of nations na wake wingi mataifa. 20 Ishirini. and he blessed them somebody say bless them Akawabari. somebody say I need a blessing I need a blessing so he blessed them Akawabari. that they saying Sikuile. in this shall Israel bless God make as the as Ephraim and as Manasseh Kwa kisema Mungu na kufanya kama Ephraim na Manasseh and he set Ephraim before Manasseh akamweka Ephraim mbele ya Manasseh so these two children were blessed watoto hao ili walibarikiwa they were walking in the ways of God walitembea katika njia za Mungu Israel said to Jacob Israel akamwambia Yusuf Joseph behold tazama now i die mimi ninakufa but i but God shall be with you and bring you again unto the land of your fathers. So God will always refer ancestors as fathers. So your ancestors, where you came from, that is where God will take you. That is in the land of Canaan. The land of Abraham, Isaac. So when you study about this to Ephraim and Manasseh, because there is something I want you to see here. Years, years went by. Years went by until a young man called Manasseh now, he became king to reign over Judah many many years later he reigned in Judah thank you for watching we hope you've been blessed this program continues tomorrow same time to get a copy of this whole sermon or any other on DVD SMS or call 0710 448570 For prayers call 0719 or 0722 To partner with the Oracle Television Network SMS or call 0700 623 Two six.